To understand the importance of activating helper T cells, let's recall when microbes invade our tissues, some of them enter our cells and make our cells infected, but some others stay in extracellular fluid. We refer to the antigens of the microbes that are inside our cells as endogenous antigen, and the antigens of microbes that are outside our cells, we refer to them as exogenous antigen. We use different immune responses to destroy the microorganisms. For example, infected cells must be killed and destroyed. So we need some immune cells that they are capable of targeting the infected cells and killing them. However, to destroy the microorganisms that are in extracellular fluid, we can also use chemicals. One of those chemicals is here, antibody. And when helper T cells become active, the active helper T cells release a variety of proteins named cytokines. Cytokines are needed for many of our immune responses. So that would be the importance of activating helper T cell to get cytokines. This inactive helper T cell is sitting in secondary lymphatic organs and tissues. They are lymph node, spleen, and lymphatic nodule. It has an antigen receptor However, the T cells cannot use their antigen receptors to bind to the antigen of the microbe directly. So we always need a third party, which in this case is called an antigen presenting cell. Antigen presenting cell is a cell that can phagocytize this exogenous antigen and carefully, without infecting itself, it breaks down the exogenous antigen into smaller pieces named antigen fragment peptides. In its endoplasmic reticulum, antigen presenting cell builds a self-antigen that is called major histocompatibility complex. And then, again I emphasize, without infecting itself, antigen presenting cell binds its self-antigen to a piece of that non-self exogenous antigen and builds a complex T cells are capable of reading this complex, which is made of a self antigen and a piece of the non self antigen. Cells that can act as antigen presenting cells are dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells. And if you think about those parts of our bodies that microbe usually use those areas to invade, such as skin and mucous membrane, you notice the presence of a very large number of these antigen presenting cells. Clearly, now we know the importance of these cells because they build a complex that T cells can actually read. However, it is important to note that antigen presenting cells can build two different types of MHC. They can build MHC1, they can also build MHC2. The question here is, the cell is not infected. How this cell makes it clear that it's just presenting a complex and it's not infected? In this case, hopefully the image of my hand can help you to recall the information. When antigen presenting cell tries to clarify that it's coming in peace, it is not infected, it is just a messenger, it uses MHC2. So now it becomes clear that the complex that in this video we're focused on is a complex that we refer to it as MHC2 antigen complex. After antigen presenting cell builds MHC2 antigen complex, then it's ready to travel through lymph or bloodstream and get to those spots that we have the inactive helper T cells and present the MHC2 antigen complex to the helper T cell. So as you see, now inactive helper T cell using its antigen receptor is reading the complex and we can see the role of CD4 protein, which is one of the components of inactive helper T cell. CD4 protein allows the helper T cell to interact with the antigen presenting cell. You can think about it in a very simple way that CD4 protein is like a hook it allows the helper T cell to hold on to the complex and also it assists helper T cell 
in reading the complex. It is also interesting to know that some antigen-presenting cells, such as macrophages, release a cytokine called interleukin-1. Interleukin-1 has many different effects, but one of those effects is listed here. Interleukin-1 promotes proliferation of helper T cells. And the question is, why we need this helper T cell to divide rapidly? The answer is right here. We have a very large number of this microorganism invading our tissues, and only activating one helper T cell is not sufficient. One cell cannot fight so many microbes. So we need this helper T cell to rapidly divide, proliferate, and after proliferation happens, we see that we get an army of two groups of cells. One group is referred to as active helper T cell or effector helper T cell, and the other group is referred to as memory helper T cell. The active helper T cells are the ones that get involved in the battle that we have this time against this microbe, and they release a variety of cytokines. Here, I indicated literally the most important cytokine that active helper T cells release, which would be interleukin-2. Interleukin-2 is needed for many of our immune responses. For several days, these active helper T cells release the cytokines, and then they die. So we cannot keep these active helper T cells. However, when we focus on memory helper T cells, we notice that this time they don't get involved in the battle against the microbe, and that's the main reason memory helper T cells survive. And actually, some of these memory helper T cells have a very long lifespan. They can live up to several decades. Before I move on and elaborate more on the memory helper T cells, I would like to mention a few important effects of interleukin-2. Please keep in mind interleukin-2 is a molecule that is used as a treatment plan for many of our patients. So it is important that we learn a few things about this very important molecule. The moment I look at this image, I notice that interleukin-2 is a cytokine that helps promotes activation and proliferation of all our lymphocytes. And specifically speaking, interleukin-2 is a co-stimulator for the rest of helper T cells, for also cytotoxic T cells and B cells. Clearly, interleukin-2 has a role in making our immune response a positive feedback system. For example, here I can see a few active helper T cells when they release interleukin-2, and this interleukin-2 co-stimulates some other helper T cells, I end up with more active helper T cells, and then I end up with more numbers of interleukin-2 molecules. So that's what I mean by a positive feedback system. In general, interleukin-2 helps and intensify our immune responses. And also we see that interleukin-2 stimulates proliferation and activation of natural killer cells. Recall, these are mass killers. As I mentioned, we lose the active helper T cells after several days of releasing the cytokines, and after the battle is over, when we check, we see that in our lymphoid system, we have the memory helper T cells left. And we use these cells in the future when we are exposed to the exact same microorganism. This time, the immune response that we're going to get because of these memory helper T cells is very different and much faster than the first time. Because we have these cells that they have the experience of meeting that microbe before, so these memory helper T cells, this time, during the second encounter with that microbe, read the MHC2 antigen complexes that antigen presenting cells presents very rapidly, and their proliferation and building an army of new active helper T cells and new memory helper T cells is much faster than the first time. The story repeats 
The active helper T cells are the ones that release cytokines and get involved in the battle against the microbe and eventually we lose them. But the new memory helper T cells are not going to get involved in the fight and they live, they survive. Having these memory helper T cells is an indication that have, we have built some immunity against this microorganism simply because in the second encounter with the microbe, the reaction is so fast that in many cases, before we even notice the signs and symptoms of that infection, we get rid of the microbe. We simply means our immune responses get rid of the microbe. So that would be the importance of building this army that includes a group that are involved in destruction of the microbe and another group that they keep the memory of that microbe for future use.